One of my favorite cartoons has always been Calvin and Hobbes. When it was discontinued a couple of years ago, I cut out the final cartoon on a Sunday morning, and I actually have it framed in my office. The cartoon is about Calvin, who's this rambunctious young boy, and his uh, stuffed tiger, this pet tiger that he has. And they travel around and have all kinds of adventures together. You see in this cartoon, Calvin and Hobbes walking out the front porch and looking across the front yard, uh, a new fallen snow. Calvin exclaims, oh, look, look, it has snowed overnight, how beautiful. And Hobbes says, it's like a fresh new sheet of paper to draw on. And Calvin says, come on, old buddy, let's go exploring. And so his friend and he take the toboggan and off they go into a new adventure. As I look out into 2014, uh, I think about the excitement and the risk. I don't know if you've been tobogganing before, but as you sit at the top of the hill, sometimes you're filled with excitement, but there's also a little bit of risk involved before you push off and head down the hill. That's how I am thinking about 2014. My role as a district superintendent uh, allows me to um, do many different tasks, but one of my favorite tasks that's listed in the discipline is chief missional strategist. What that means simply is that uh, it allows me to take the balcony view of what's happening in the district and where we can go together as part of people in ministry and mission for Jesus Christ. There's two things that I want to share with you today, uh, two areas that I think uh, really need our attention in the coming year. The first, uh, laity, I'm speaking right to you. I've been so encouraged and so um, energized by your spirit and your excitement for being willing to change. I think we're, we're at a day that laity are saying, yeah, we can't do things the way that we've always done them, but we don't know how to take that next step. Across the district, we have initiated a program called Equipping God's People. And it's, it's a lengthy program, it's eight months. But already in two places in our district, we have almost 60 laity who have signed up and are in classes right now. Now this isn't about a specific church program that you can implement, but rather it's about looking at a church, looking at our church, and the changes that need to be made in order for us to be relevant in a brand new day. It's been fun to hear laity who are excited about what they are learning. And so in the coming year, we want to broaden this program across the district. We're training uh, pairs of clergy and laity right now to teach it so that we can start to talk to each other and continue to gather in groups long after the eight month class is over to speak together, those who have taken the class, and perhaps taking it back to their local church to continue the conversation and generate that excitement about this new day in our local church. Lady, we need you now more than ever to be bold, to take that risk, to push off into a new world, and we hope to provide the tools that will allow you to live into that excitement for this new day. Secondly, the other piece of this for 2014 that I think is crucial is we, as both clergy and laity, need to be better about telling our story. We need to be better in telling our story in worship. Clergy, you're going to have an opportunity, and I, I hope you take advantage of it in the coming year, to work on your preaching. Our cluster leaders are going to be initiating uh, some workshops where uh, clergy across the cluster can get together and using a format, help to uh, evaluate each other's preaching and help to spur each other on into excellence as they deliver this message. I hope you take advantage of that. We're gonna be providing scholarships for clergy to attend the Festival of Homiletics in May. We're also going to be uh, encouraging both our laity and clergy to get together to um, attend a, a workshop that will help in planning our worship throughout the year. So it's not just thrown together, but rather there's an intentional strategy in planning our themes and planning our worship, and especially in making sure that our worship is geared towards those who have yet to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. 
our worship has gotten, uh, well, very comfortable. And it's gotten to the point that we just continue to do the same thing over and over again because it's what we like. And we've lost our passion to reach those who have yet to hear. We have to tell our story not just in the time of gathered worship, but we have to learn how to tell our faith story again. That story that has meant so much to us from the very beginning, that reason we have come to Jesus Christ, that story needs to be told and retold. Maybe we need to practice telling it to each other, but we need to find a way to be able to share that with those who have yet to hear the good news. Because when we tell our story, there's, the, there's something that bubbles up, a joy that bubbles up within us that reminds us again why we are children of God and why we have chosen to walk this road with Jesus Christ. Again, I'm going to be working with cluster leaders and leaders across the district to find opportunities perhaps to, to just share our story with each other in informal settings, in places where we can learn again why we are followers of Jesus Christ, or at least remember again why we are follow followers of Jesus Christ and recapture that joy that we have. May God's blessing continue to be with you as you serve our great church and especially as you serve the God who blesses us with this mission and this purpose in life.